and let people oops okay i pushed the wrong button i pushed go live and end it so i don't know if it's going to go live or not it tells me here on my side that it is now streaming live perfect i see it now too thank you uh-huh so i'll introduce the show then i'll introduce you and then we'll get into your whole entire life all right exception to today all in 15 minutes is that right we can do this. Yeah. <laughs> talk, we'll talk fast. They can slow it down some way later. Facebook, I'm telling you, Comic Spot is on the spot for you today. I mean, Comic Spot was created so that this Army veteran can now vet out comedy veterans. And you have one before you right now. You have the amazing, famous <laughs> touring comic who has plastered this country with his comedy his views on dry bar comedy are about 14 million 14 me, aren't they are they more than that now 150 million oh my god really bro oh my gosh brad that's crazy why didn't i know that don't you ordered on my bio I did write it correctly. How many Who else was it? on the show today? You had Ross Bennett on, right? Yeah. He's at 14. You're mixing oh. me up with Ross. I think that's what you're doing. I don't know if I'm that mean to mix <laughs> people up. I mix up numbers. I hate math. <laughs> yeah. So yours is at what? How many million? 150 million. He is the top person on dry bar views ever, right? Woo! He is it. He is it. So let me read you the intro. On Instagram, you can find him at Brad Upton Comedy. On Facebook, it's Brad Upton Fan Page. Dry Bar Comedy's most popular comedian with, you're correct, over 150 million views. He's got more views than McDonald's has sold hamburgers at my local joint. Holy Toledo. Brad is a regular performer at the Grand Ole Opry and used to tour with the late great Joan Rivers. He has spent the last 14 years dedicating his life to making people laugh and opening for the legendary Johnny Mathis. Welcome to the stage, soon to be your friend, hopefully still gonna be mine when I misquote the number of views on dry bar, Brad Upton. Thank you so much. I Hi. appreciate it. Thanks Thank for having me. Oh God, are you kidding? You're the man. Everybody's gotta be wanting to have a piece of you. Well, not now, no one does. <laughs> they did before March and then all of a sudden, no more. So I wanna hear about you growing up. I know you did track, so did I. You're a Washington person. I'm Oregon, raised my daughter in Washington. I wanna, I wanna know about where you grew up, when you were first seen funny, when you got on stage. I wanna hear it all. Uh, I grew up in the Tri-Cities. Uh, I was born and raised in the Tri-Cities and uh, went to Richland High School, graduated from Richland High School and uh, went to Spokane Community for two years, the University of Montana for a year, and then I transferred back to Eastern Washington and that's where I graduated from. And I ran, wow. track, at, uh, I ran track at all three schools. I ran track at um, Oregon College of Education from 1969 to 71. Was I too old for you? little bit okay cool we're not going there <laughs> i'm 69 years old i figured i'm, I'm 64. older i'm 64. i'm 64. awesome yeah, yeah i i love track what was your what were your you jumped the hurdles right yeah, yeah. ran the 110 meter highs and the 400 meter hurdles wow yeah how about you, yourself what did you what events i'm very short and i'm not I'm all torso, no legs. So as a ground pounder, I ran the mile. Oh, okay. You're short? Five foot two, I eyes would, of blue. I would have guessed you to be tall from your pictures. <laughs> it's tricky, right? Yeah. Very trick photography. I had a mirror that made me look really tall. Yeah, one of those skinny. fun house mirrors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's where I got my body dysmorphic disorder <laughs> from those. So. Talk to me about what happened. When was the first time you started performing anything? And when did uh, it go to comedy? I, 
I started a little bit later because I was just chicken and I was teaching uh, fourth grade in Pasco, so there was nowhere to go do comedy. I mean, I wanted to do it. I had a drive to do it. I was drawn to it, but there was nowhere to do it. So uh, that was easy way to put it off. And, you know, cause well, where am I going to do it? And so I waited and I waited. I didn't do my first open mic till I was 28 years old. Wow. Which is kind of late in the comedy business to start. And then, but it was the early eighties. So uh, I quickly got some momentum and uh, after my very first open mic, then I quit teaching school. Uh, let's see, 80, 45, less than two years later. And uh, in, in June of 86, I quit teaching fourth grade in Pasco, and then I've been doing comedy full time ever since. Wow. So comic spot, I love it. I know you've loved it. Let's keep it going. I need your help. I developed it so you out there can get to know comics whether they're brand new or 45 years in the biz, we're gonna to get to know them so you'll know who to love. So all I need you to do is donate to my cash app and that is Linda Marcus Smith. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. So the, the Tri-Cities is Richland, Pasco and Kennewick? Correct. Good. And I was with I was with Washington Mutual in, from 82 to 87 and went out there doing co corporate training. Oh, okay. So I wanted to see if I still remember that correctly. Yeah. yeah. So track, college, performing in the 80s. Do you remember the first time you got up on stage and oh, how yeah. scared? Oh, yeah. And how did it go? How scared and how did it go? No, I was terrified. And uh, in fact, I went over exactly one year earlier. I signed up in September of 1983. I signed up for an open mic and then... It was my turn. It was almost my turn. There was three more spots before I went up and I chickened out and I got scared and I told the MC, I'm not going up. He goes, well, what do you mean? You're not going up. It's almost your turn. I went, no, I'm not going up. And I walked out of the club and drove home and I hated myself for a year because I just oh. got scared. I chickened out and I came back exactly to the day a year later and signed up again because I thought, man, if you're going to do this, you better do it. I mean, you're not getting any younger. So I signed up and back in the early eighties, the comedy open mics were packed yes. and the crowds were hot for an open mic. So uh, I went up and I did my five minutes. It was mostly about teaching fourth grade and um, I killed, I killed. And I got off stage and no one was more, uh, the, the elation I felt was phenomenal because all the jokes worked and I finally did what I wanted to do and it went very well. And then the late great Laura Crocker came up to me afterwards and she said, we thought you were wonderful. You were great, really enjoyed that set and we want you to be in a competition. And I said, I said, what do you mean? The competition, I don't understand. And she said, we, we, you passed the audition. And I said, audition for what? I don't understand, is this open mic? Cause I'd never been on stage, right? I didn't know what it was. And she goes, yes, it is open mic, but it's also, tonight is also an audition for the Seattle Stand Up Comedy Competition. My gosh. And she said, and you passed, we want you to be in the competition. And I said, oh, okay, okay that's great. So what do I do now? She said, it's, this was the last night of the audition. I think they were trying to fill out the last couple of spots probably. And so, they chose a couple of people from that night. And then she said, come back next Tuesday night. And then you're in the first week and you start the comedy competition. And so I came back the next week and yeah. now I'm in with 19 other professionals, right? So, and it's only my second time on stage. Wow. And I did the exact same step set verbatim, word for word that I'd done the previous week. And it didn't go as well oh. as the first time. And I was like, what? I can't, what, what, you know, I didn't know what happened, but the audience could tell that previous night on the open mic, by comparison, I probably looked pretty good to everybody, but now I'm in with a bunch of professionals and obviously I don't look as good. So uh, it didn't go as well the second, third, fourth time I got on stage, but having that first good experience, I was hooked yes. and uh, I, I was hooked at that point. I, I had to keep doing it. Good night. So talk to me about your illustrious career. You've accomplished so much. I mean, you're, 
you're a comedy legend. You, well, that's just from being around forever, I think. That's all it is. Um, yeah. um, I've worked steadily since 86. And, uh, you know, before the COVID, I was doing, I was doing about six or eight cruise ships a year. And I was doing about 15, 16 dates a year with Johnny Mathis. And I was doing a lot of corporate events and, and just a handful of clubs and public and then, you know, in, tw in 2018, those dry bar videos hit and that dry bar video hit and went crazy. Isn't that and something? all of a sudden after 34 years uh, in comedy, all of a sudden people are like, oh, this guy's great. Oh, look at this guy. He's great. I go, well, I've been around forever. It was nice. It was very satisfying to have people discover me after all those years. Yeah, people came and all of a sudden uh, that, that was very gratifying because, you know, I was I'm at the end of my career now. And then yeah. all these young comedians are telling me this is what you should do with all these with all these views. This is what you should do to promote yourself. You should do this and this and this. I go, I'm 63 years old. There's no there's no 10 year plan for me at this point. I'm <laughs> almost done. So <laughs> it's been very rewarding. It, th those dry bar videos and all of a sudden uh you know, I got a lot of corporate work out of those. People saw me on Dry Bar. They wanted me to come perform at their events. And then I have a lot of people. Uh, my my fan page went from about 300 people to over 27,000. And um, they all want me to come tour and come to their towns and stuff. But I'm like, well, I've been to your town for the last 25 years. You just never, never came out and saw me. But um, I don't do that much public. I mean, I do it. It, it may change after the COVID. I don't know what's going to be available. But I, in the last several years, it was cruise ship, Johnny Mathis, and corporate events. So people didn't really see me in clubs or anything. I mean, they didn't come see me in any casinos or where you might see comics. I was doing, I was working a lot, but just not publicly, I guess. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. Yeah. I get it. I started when I was 63. Oh, okay. So yeah. six years in now, and I just barely figured out my persona, just barely. Right. <laughs> Takes a while, it you know. It sure does. So, what, so then that answers where you're going to go with your career. You're going to hang loose and do, keep doing the things you've been doing, but not travel as much. Well, yeah, and I think live, unfortunately, live entertainment is going to be the last thing to come back. So uh, it's going to be a while. Um, I'm I think it's next week, next, the 21st of August. I'm doing a show at the Mill Casino in Coos Bay. Oh. And I'm excited. I haven't been on stage in so long. I want people to come. If they want to come out and see a comedian, try and remember his act, that would be a good time to do it. Mill Casino in Coos Bay, Oregon. And the, what dates is that? Uh, it's the 21st. I got my calendar right in front of me. I never even pick up my calendar anymore. Um, next it, month? August. No, this month, August 21st. And I do two shows, it's on a Friday night. And uh, that'll be my first time since, oh Lord, March, I think. Wow. So I gotta remember my act. And a lot of people too on my fan page, go, oh, you must have all new material. You're gonna have so much new material. I'm like, well, it's kind of weird because first of all, I have to remember my old material. That's the first thing I'm gonna have to do. But normally in the last five months, there's nowhere to work out new material, right? So you Absolutely. might be writing it, but you don't get to perform it. So uh, I, I'll have new material, there's no question about it, but I'll still have to work it out and break it all in. I'm not gonna have a whole new polished half hour of material. It's gotta be, yeah. you gotta work on it in your act and stick it in your act and try and are you at, Are you know, you're gonna be in Coos Bay, Oregon's my home, home state, so, have you picked out your head, your feature? It might be somebody I know. Um, uh, Pat Wilson told me who it was. Uh, That'd be somebody good. Oh, I don't remember. Uh, I'm gonna go with Brian Bixby would be a good choice with you. It was the first, it was a guy and his, it was just his name and his first, his, the first initial of his last name. Does that make sense? Like Kenny, not Kenny G, but it was something like I know like what you that. mean. I Robbie know you mean. R. Or, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there is like a Robbie something, but I don't, I don't know, know if that's it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And it's probably going to be a house uh, host. 
Yeah, I think so. And I know that Gabe Rutledge did it a couple of weeks ago, and he said we you stand we stand behind a plastic screen, and the audience is all separated, that, like two at a table, and they all have to wear masks. So I don't know how much laughter I'm going to hear if everybody's got a mask over their face. <laughs> um, but people are spread out. You can't sell merch afterwards because they don't want you shaking hands or getting close to people. Um, and I think the comedian brings their own microphone up. They switch, put on a new microphone between comics. Um, but there's distance between me and the audience. But I really want to do it just to get on stage and run my act through my head, you know. Totally. Yeah. I totally get that. That's amazing. I can't wait to promote your show in Coos Bay at the Mills, Mill Casino, August 21st, two shows. Probably like seven and ten, seven and yeah. eight. Yeah, I th yeah. There's two shows. Probably They'll figure seven it out. And ten, seven and nine. I don't know what they are. Yeah, cool. So, what else? Are you, do you still get out and jump the hurdles? I do sometimes. Uh, so great. All the time on my hand during the this time I've been walking, mostly walking. I run a little bit, fifty miles a week. Wow. And uh, I still go up and do a little bit of track work. I get on the track. I do some hurdle drills. And uh, just to change things, I still try and do a little plyometric stuff, mm -hmm. little bounding and hopping stuff like that. Not like I used to, but I've always coached on the side too. I've done that Have for you? years. No I've way. 34 of the last 40 years. Who'd you coach? What teams? Uh, I coached high school when I was still teaching. And then for 10 years, 11 years, I coached at the University of Washington. What? I coached the hurdlers and then uh, I had a year at Seattle Pacific University and then I've coached high school for the last 13 years. Hmm. It's always when I'm in town, if I'm in town, I'm there every day. So, but they understand that if I have work, then I'm gone for a couple of days. But yeah, even when... though I coached all those, I, I, in March, April, May, I sometimes turn down work because I have track meets that weekend that I don't want to miss. So like in May, it's regionals and district and state. And I'm like, no, I'm not going out of town. I'm doing track that weekend. So I've I've turned down some pretty lucrative stuff just to just to go coach that weekend. So then some of your track people probably made it into college scholarships and beyond. Yeah, I've got several, a couple of them right now that run for Eastern. A couple of girls over at Eastern right now, and uh, I've had several of them go to college. Wonderful. And in 96, That's a... I had uh, I had two girls when I was at University of Washington. I had two girls qualify for the Olympic trials. Was one of them the last name Martinez? No. No. Okay. I remember one girl from UW. I thought went to the Olympics with the Hispanic name of Martinez, and I was like, "You go, girl. <laughs> you show them." Yeah. Yeah. So they went. How did they do at the Olympics, Brad? Well, they went to the trials, went to the Olympic trials, did not make the Olympic team. So, uh, but, you know, qualify, qualifying for the Olympic trials is a big deal. Big deal. Yeah. At, that's what we're down at the U of O, right? Uh, yes. How many times have you been to that event? Oh, man. The Olympic trials mm. or just to the U of O? U of O Olympic trials. Uh, just the, just the one time I have. I wanted to go this year. Yeah. And then obviously there wasn't it. I want to see that new stadium. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Uh, well, there's little time left before I need to sign off. How would you like to have some time to just talk to people and tell them how to make it through a pandemic or how to not lose your mind or how sure. to stay Are we going to have people join us? Is that what you're saying? You can talk like as if they're right here. Pretend you're talking to a bunch of people and just look at me like they're listening. People don't know how to act right now. They don't. People are losing their freaking mind. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm lucky because my wife works full time, so I'm not financially. I'm I'm fine. You know, a lot of people. I'm not making any money, but my wife is, so I'm lucky that way. Yes. Um, and I have a lot of time on my hands. So I'm, I'm really fortunate. I've been out walking and walking and you should take advantage of this time right now. Don't use it. I know what people are saying they're eating and gaining weight. I'm like, oh, you got to go the opposite. You got to go the opposite if you got that kind of time. And I've seen since I've been out walking, there's a lot of people out walking. I'm right. surprised. There's a lot of people that are exercising right now. And it's great to see. It is. So that's, a, that's the best thing I've been doing. I've been reading a lot exercising a lot what kind my yard of, looks great <laughs> do you enjoy yard work hate it 
<laughs> I love it. Oh, I, I hate can't it. Can't stand housework. I clean so I can get the hell out and go outside. I can't stand it. Yeah. Yeah, so, I have my yard actually I need mow it. I need, it rained here yesterday in Seattle. It rained all day. So I'm going to give it another day. I'll mow it tomorrow, but What's the best thing about being in Seattle these days? Because I was there in the 80s with my daughter. What's the best thing about Seattle nowadays? Uh, Seattle's beautiful. I mean, it really is. It's gorgeous. And this time of year, August, September, is I've, you know, I've traveled all over the country. I've been to all 50 states. Seattle in August and September is the nicest place in the country, I think. It's just beautiful. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. There's no insects around here bugging you you know what i mean it's it's really nice very much so i loved it up I there i love the covid lack of traffic isn't that great yeah yeah well what if somebody were planning to come to seattle and you were you're not gonna but you were gonna take them on a tour what are two things you would show them in seattle that's a good question thank you that's a good stall technique no that's a good question two things you know what, probably take a, I always tell people, take the ferry across to Bremerton and then take it when you come back, you got to go out on the front of the ferry as you sail right into Seattle. That's just, that that view is stunning. It coming is. right in on the ferry, bring, come in on the ferry. And then I think that walking around the University of Washington campus is beautiful too. The, the UW campus is beautiful. That's a great place to spend the day and go walk around. That is beautiful. And it then is. now we have the light rail. You can get on the light rail and ride it to any one of the stops and just get off any one of the stops and go explore that neighborhood. I'll be darned. When did they put in the light rail? Uh, it's gone from, it's gone from uh, the airport to downtown. That's been in several years. And now it goes to UW and the next about three stations are gonna open up. It'll go to Northgate in about a year. But uh, you get to go through the Rainier Valley in that area and you a bunch of different neighborhoods in there that are really cool. A lot of cool places to eat, and, you know. It's kind of nice to just get on and go, I'm getting off at this station. I'm gonna go walk around the neighborhood and explore. Yeah, what's the name of that lake they have north of Seattle where everybody skates, roller skates around it? Oh, Green Lake. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's cool. a great place too. That's a good, that's a good afternoon to walk around Green Lake. I know it's a thing that everybody does, but the, it's nice. It's a good place to go and the neighborhood's cool. And then Orcas Island. I know that's away from Seattle, but boy, that trip oh, yeah, out the there. The San Juan those... Islands are phenomenal. Yeah, it's I haven't heaven. been up there in several years, but they're beautiful, just beautiful. And you feel, you get on the ferry and you, all of a sudden you're in this rural, I mean, the ferry pulls away from the dock and all of a sudden you're in this rural little tiny islands and it's really nice. Really beautiful. Really beautiful. That's out where Carol King lives or lived. Is that right? Yeah, she lived out at one of those. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, for a long time, but I don't know where she lives now. Yeah, I, did <laughs> not. A... I didn't know that. So anything else you want to say? Because I'm really good at interrupting your talk. Oh, I wish I had something to plug. I mean, I wish I had some dates to plug, but there's I just know. no dates. Let's I plug. think I'm going on a, a Armed Forces Entertainment <gasps> trip. And Man. I just... Me and Kermit Apio and Dwight Slade, and uh, it's the very end of October, first part of November. But that's going to be depending if they'll allow us to travel. We'll fly to Egypt. Uh, I do. I think we do a couple shows in Egypt, a couple in uh, Qatar, a couple in Doha. Oh, Doha. Uh, uh, no, United Arab Emirates, and a couple in Jordan. So I'm really looking forward to that. Plus, I'm hanging out with great guys. Yeah, I I I met. Um, one of those guys, not, I haven't met Dwight, although he is a staple at Harvey's where I was at right. before I moved here. Yeah. I'd love to meet Dwight, Dwight, but I hadn't met him. Where do you live now? Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I came here for a visit and I don't want to leave. These people are actually my age and they don't mind that I'm a straight woman. <laughs> yeah. It's much better than in Portland. Vegas, is, that wouldn't be a, that's not a bad place to settle down. Exactly. Yeah. So Armed Forces Entertainment Tour coming up, the Mill Casino on August 21st. 
And let's get out and make his dry bar comedy special even more special. Yeah, more keep successful. sharing that around. My drive, my whole special is on, uh, it's on dry bar. It's also on um, Amazon Prime and it's also on YouTube. So the whole special can be watched in any of those places. When they, do they go to, to your Brad Upton on YouTube to see it? They could just, uh, I think if they just put Brad Upton on YouTube, it'll take you right to that. Probably okay. right to the special. Perfect. Because like 3 million people have watched it in the last several months. Watch the whole special. We so, got to get there. Let's see if we can get it up to another, get it up another million. <laughs> yeah, I, that's a great idea. Yeah, let's do that. And make sure that your record sticks just like exactly. that on the track. Keep did me on have, number one. Did you have a track record that still sticks to this day? Well, the 180 lows, 180 yard low hurdles, which they don't run anymore. So my name will always be on that list. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. Thank you so much for coming on, Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Appreciate it. Thanks for I'll, having me. Take care. All right. I'll, I'll get this posted in the, the pro version. It looks like a sitcom. It's got credits and music. Okay. And I'll get that to you by messenger in about three to four days. All righty. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right. Take Bye, care. Brad. Bye-bye. Bye. Everybody's talking at the coming spot. The coming spot.